Hey folks, Still Cowboy here from the great state of Texas. And tonight we're gonna to be talking about women and pipe smoking. And I'm lucky enough to have a wife who smokes a pipe, uh, Mrs. Steel Cowboy. And uh, before we get into that, as always, um, I wanna share what I'm smoking tonight. Um, and I am smoking tonight uh, McConnell's Scottish Cake. And um, it's a sliced uh, plug. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, dark fired Kentucky in it and it's mainly a Virginia Perique. Um, there's a little added topping to it too. Um, the first thought comes to mind with this tobacco is Retrace Howl of the Wind. Um, this is sweeter um, and not quite as complex. It sellers really, really well and um, definitely one worth checking out. And my pipe tonight is a Betty Jorgensen, and um, he seems to be lesser known than his, uh, his son, who's also a great pipe carver by the name of Lasse Skovgaard. And um, if you're into Danish pipes, um, it would be a great one to check out. So, without further ado, um, this is Steel Cowboy, and... Um, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about about women in pipe smoking, her perspective, um, what has been uh, her journey. Um, there's not a lot of women pipe smokers out there, or there seems to be a few more here and there. Um, so I guess the first question that I have for you is, you know, what what prompted you to, to start smoking a pipe? So years ago, I was at uh, well with my husband. Um, at the Las Vegas uh, West Coast uh, Pipe Show. And I saw beautiful pipes, um, shapes, styles. Um, it was really interesting to me, and I thought I'd take a, take, a, take a try. All right, have you been to any other pipe shows? I've been to several, I've been to the Chicago Pipe Show, mm -hmm. uh, the New York Pipe Show, Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, Las Vegas Pipe Show. You can get around. All right. Um, how many rolls do you typically smoke in a day? Uh, I average about one bowl a day. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, maybe two. Mm -hmm. But generally, just one bowl a day. Yeah. And um, tell me tell me a little bit about your pipe collection. Tell, tell our, our friends out there. Um, what types of pipes do you typically smoke? Um, well, I like a lot of different so I have some smooth uh, pipes mm -hmm. and some pipes that um, that are um, have a nice blast to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, and I generally like smaller pipes. Um, uh -huh. I don't like big or, or long pipes. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe it's the girl thing. I don't know. <laughs> Little well, pipes. I don't know. I'm not going to go there with that. But um, so. Tell me a little bit about your collection. What makers do you like? Um, do you have any specifics? Um, you know, I see you're smoking a Dunhill Cherrywood right now. Um, tell me a little bit about your favorite pipes. Uh, my favorite pipes uh, that in my collection are, um, some of them are from Steve Liskey, mm -hmm. uh, Scott Thiele, um, Tom Eltang, and of course my Dunhill uh, Cherrywood. Mm, okay. So. And all, all good uh, makers. Uh, any others? I have several from uh, from Icarus, which mm -hmm. I love uh, mm -hmm. to smoke out of. Um, that's, yep. that's very affordable that's a, that's pipe. About it. Yeah. Really high quality from uh, from the folks at Briar Works. Yep. Um, tobaccos. You know, a lot of times, um, for whatever reason, I think it's kind of like motorcycles, you know. Mm -hmm. When you think of a woman in a motorcycle, you think of a small bike. Um, maybe it's it's just my um, uh, male ego coming through there, but I think a lot of times when guys think about women smoking a pipe, they think of them smoking, you know, a cherry or aromatic or something like that. And, you know, maybe that's not a fair comparison. What types of blends do you typically smoke? I typically smoke um, English blend, mm -hmm. uh, Virginia's, and uh, Lakeland blends. Mm -hmm. So pretty, pretty wide, uh, yeah. pretty wide array. And uh, interestingly enough, um, 
her and I don't smoke a lot of the same blends, um, which is always a great excuse for having a large or tobacco cellar, you know. Um, it also keeps me out of trouble in terms of uh, the money that I spend on, on tobaccos. Um, so what type of Lakeland blend do you smoke? That's kind of an odd one. A lot of people don't smoke Lakelands. Uh, that tends to be for most often for experienced pipe smokers, and I think that might have been the first uh, set of blends that you ever went to. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. Um, actually, my favorite Lakeland is Grousemore. Mm. Uh, it's very unique, uh, mm -hmm. it's different. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's hard to describe. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it, but it's, it, I think it's one of those love or hate Oh, kind yeah. of a yeah. blend. You either really love it or you don't. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I, I like it too. To me, it tastes a little bit like floral cookies. Mm. But um, So what about uh, Virginia's? What's your favorite Virginia? My favorite Virginia is Red Cake. Mm. 5100 Red Cake. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a, a tobacco that's a great everyday tobacco. Um, it's obviously a red Virginia, it's sweet, um, and it ages really, really well. So um, whenever I think of Virginias, I think about aging them and what benefits there are to them, and certainly that's, that's one of them. What about English? What's your favorite English? I think you're smoking in English right now. I am right now. Um, this one here is Nor'easter, but my favorite so far has to be Park Lane number eight. Mm. Interesting you mentioned that. Um, I have a, a video that's already done, that's going to be coming up pretty soon, um, about small blenders doing big things. And um, Nor'easter is made by a, a, a shop outside of Boston called Watch City Cigar. Uh, and I'm going to get into that in detail um, in, in an upcoming video. But it is kind of similar to Plum Pudding uh, from Seattle Pipe Club, if you enjoy that blend. Um, and she meant to mention Park Lane Number Eight, um, uh, which is from a shop uh, up in uh, Clifton Park, New York, uh, outside of Albany. Um, and that, to me, reminds me a little bit of Frog Morton. I don't know about you, but a little bit, yeah. Frog Morton on Frog, the town. Frog Morton is another yeah. one of my favorites. So. Yeah. So if you're a Frog Morton on the town lover, certainly Park Lane Number Eight is uh, is, is worth a look. Um, I, I'm not a big forum guy. For whatever reason, I think sometimes there's some nastiness on the forums that just doesn't appeal to me. Um, but I love tobacco reviews. I, I review there a lot um, under the name Steel Cowboy. Um, have you tried your hand at forums or, or tobacco reviews? I have uh, several reviews. Um, actually, I have, I think, a little, maybe over. 30 reviews mm -hmm. on tobaccoreviews.com. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's the only one I I, yep. I do any kind of reviews on. Is, yeah. Is that. Yeah. So. so I know that um, Mrs. Steel Cowboy and I we go to um, we belong to two pipe clubs uh, because we live in an area where we're fortunate enough to have two. Um, most often we're at the Austin Pipe Club here in Austin. Um, and we also travel up to the Bud Price Pipe Club in, uh, in Waco, actually in McGregor, Texas now. Um, and you, you, you attend when you can. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other women in either of those clubs off the top of my head? I can't. Uh, no, no. I think I'm the only female there at both. <laughs> what, do you feel out of place? No, no, they, they make me feel uh, right at home, um, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of feel like one of the guys, I guess, hanging out, smoking mm -hmm. a pipe, you know, <laughs> relaxing and uh -huh. having a nice conversation, you know, mm -hmm. with a nice group of uh, guys, so. Well, one of the things that I, I one of the things I've talked about and, and, and I'm going to talk about periodically is that for me, I like to do a lot of long distance motorcycling. That's where the name Steel Cowboy comes from. Um, not ironically from, from living in Texas. Um, and 
there seems to be some connections to that. I have some stories that seem to come out of that. Um, and and you're you're an accomplished motor, a long distance motorcyclist too. Mm -hmm. um, what got you into that? And tell me a little bit about what you accomplished so far. Well, I've been riding since uh, about 2001. Mm -hmm. Bought my first bike, uh, a little Harley Sportster, mm -hmm. and uh, ridden through 46 states and mm -hmm. uh, been through some rough roads and some very beautiful roads um, mm -hmm. and you know after a long day of uh, riding mm -hmm. you know just like to sit back and just relax and have a pipe and mm -hmm. not have to worry about much of anything mm. so yeah that, that's very true for me too I, I have one of these little old custom built pipes and um, it's called the His Nibs, and it came out in, oh, the 1940s or late 30s. Um, the late Bill Unger wrote a great book about custom-built pipes, and uh, I even believe that they were given to some uh, fighter pilots in World War II, and the His Nibs was designed for uh, college students to have a quick smoke uh, between classes, and it's a very, very little pipe, um, and I keep it... Uh, on, on my bike for those quick quick stops, you know, <laughs> where I can get a few puffs in before uh, before we hit the next, you know, bunch of miles. Um, so you think there's definitely a connection uh, between pipe smoking and, and riding? I think so for, for mm -hmm. me. What do you typically ride now for long distance? Uh, I have a uh, street glide, a Harley, Harley street glide that, mm -hmm. that I ride. Uh, that's for long distance, and then kind of what I call banging around town, short mm -hmm. rides. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a brand new uh, Indian Scout that I uh, that I like to ride. So mm. yeah. nice bikes. I try to get on them whenever she's uh, out of town. <laughs> I keep the keep the you know everything lubed up and fresh. Um, last thing we want, I want to talk about is you know there may be some women that are that are watching this right now. Um, clearly women still are the minority in the pipe world, um, but they, I, I remember back in 2001 when you started riding, there were a lot less women riding then That's true. than, than there are now. And, uh, and I want to state here for, for the record that even though I've been riding for uh, 30 plus years, that my wife could ride circles around me. So um, do you think that's going to happen with pipes and what would you say? to any women that are thinking about possibly smoking a pipe? Um, I would hope so. Uh, I think for women, if they wanted to try it, go for it. Um, you know, you might need to try several different pipes or tobacco blends, something, um, until you find the one that, that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and not to get discouraged uh, if you happen to, you know, little tongue burn. Little, yeah, that little tongue <laughs> burn or, you know, yeah. um, or, you know, come upon a, a tobacco blend that really doesn't suit your style or the taste, um, you think it's awful or, or whatever it happens to be, just to con kind of continue and try different different blends like I did until I found the ones that that I really enjoy. Yeah, um, yeah. That's about, that's, you know. Well, that's if, you found, if you found Grouse Moore as your first favorite blend, um, it shows commitment, that's, yeah. for, that's for sure. Um, anyway, I, that, that's what I have for you tonight, and um, I've got some cool stuff upcoming. Um, we'll be talking about some of the great blast blasters that are out there right now. Um, so that's one of the, the next things that's coming up soon. I'm also going to be talking about um, cellaring tobacco as a follow-up to uh, the last video I did on uh, buying and, and selecting dated or older tins and uh, ways to kind of spot, you know, what's a uh, an aged tin and uh, and roughly how old it is. Um, do you have any old, older tobaccos you like? I know you, I know the red cake is definitely one that uh, you seldom smoke new. It's usually something of an older variety. Um. There's a lot of different ones. I don't. Yeah. Um, 
she tends to I gravitate tend to, towards yeah. the McClellan uh, Virginias that are aged, where I tend to, to gravitate towards the European made uh, Virginias. There's just a different uh, quality to them, not that one's better than the other. Um, I think that the EU made uh, Virginias pack a little bit, or blends rather, EU made blends tend to pack a little bit more punch, um, whether it's Solani or, um, you know, Silver Flake or, or the uh, Virginia 633 um, or Deluxe Navy Rolls or Scudo, and you tend to gravitate more towards the Red Cakes, the... Uh, more on the, maybe the milder, yeah, medium side. Yeah, and... Uh, so there's a little something for everybody, you know. There's there's thousands and thousands of different possibilities uh, when you get into blending. It's amazing that just a, such a small group of tobaccos can create so many different experiences. Anyway, from the great state of Texas, this is Steel Cowboy. Have a great night.